Right now at noon, one local casino announces they have a data breach resulting in real people's information being compromised. And cold temperatures have returned to the four states and it is just bitterly cold out there today. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Plus, it's crunch time for candidates in New Hampshire. Each GOP hopeful is making multiple campaign stops today to deliver last minute pitches to the Republicans and independent voters alike. The four states most watched news starts now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on KOAM News at Noon. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. Today's freezing temperatures are causing many in the four states to hunker down and shelter inside. So we'll begin this broadcast with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. Chris, how long do we have to endure these Arctic conditions? Well, the good news, Caitlin, is we don't have to endure them for more than just a couple more days. However, it's going to feel like the longest couple of days that we've experienced, well, at least since the beginning of this week. We had a cold front pass through last night, brought those temperatures down rapidly out there. We've got a few clouds on the Skywatch Storm Tracker. MoDOT camera, 20th and range line, it's still swaying in the breeze, and that's the other factor to this is the fact we've got wind gusts upwards of 30 miles an hour out there. So so yeah, the sun is out. It looks like a nice day, but it's not. It's very cold out there. Our camera on the Cornell complex also showing the wind blowing. It's been shaking in the breeze. There's a few of those clouds. Like I said, it looks like a pleasant day, but the temperature is painting a different picture. And we also have these wind chill advisories across the area running until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning down in Oklahoma and Arkansas until noon in southwest Missouri, parts of southeast Kansas and until 11 o'clock tomorrow morning for the rest of southeast East Kansas. We made it yesterday it was a relatively average day. We started at 25 right where we should be made it to 42. So only a couple of degrees off of average today. On the other hand, nowhere near that we are at 13 in Joplin 12 in Pittsburgh right now. Temperatures around the region holding out in the low teens as we head into our Friday afternoon with wind chills out there well below that and some of us below zero still. We're going to take a complete look at that forecast because as I promised this cold weather. It's just today, tomorrow and into Sunday, and then it's going to change for the better. We'll have a full look at that forecast here in just a few more minutes, but just hang on. All right, we hang will. On. We're going to we make will. it. Bundle up. Well, now we're going to go live to the Joplin Walmart on West 7th Street, where the Oscar Mayer Wiener has just pulled into town. Here you'll see the 27 foot long hot dog on wheels. The iconic Wiener Mobile has been delighting children and adults since it was first created back in 1936 appearing during the Great Depression and first touring parades, grocery stores and hospitals in Chicago before expanding to tours across the country. The Oscar Mayer Wienermobile will be in Joplin from January 19th to the 21st. They'll be heading out the Wienermobilia, including the iconic Wiener Whistle and playing fun games for all to enjoy. For a list of locations and times, head over to our website at koamnewsnow.com. And operations at the Jasper County Courthouse grinded to a halt Wednesday night after a pipe burst and flooding happened in the building. County officials say that the rupture went unnoticed for a prolonged period of time. The fire and sheriff's departments both responded and a county official says when they arrived they found ankle deep water in the road. Crews quickly shut off both the water and power to the building. Offices on the third, second and first floors have extensive damage. Serve Pro workers arrived within an hour of first responders and began clearing the damage. The workers were also at the courthouse most of yesterday. We can't do anything until we put it all back together again. That's going to take a little bit of time here in Carthage. And we'll proceed with that as soon as we can. But, you know, this is the morning after. We're still <laughs> sorting through some of this stuff. Already talked to a contractor, already talked to our IT people, already talked to our furniture people. We've had discussions already but we're just not there yet. And people seeking to visit with the assessors or collector's offices will be unable to do so until early next week. And we'll have to visit the Joplin office once power to the server is restored. Indigo Sky Casino in Wyandotte, Oklahoma notifies victims of a data breach incident. The casino says it learned about the breach on December 1st. The breach included employees' personal information, including names, driver's license numbers, social security numbers, and medical information, as well as some patron information. Indigo Sky has since taken steps to secure their systems and notify law enforcement. And Leggett and Plant is restructuring, expecting to eliminate 900 to 1,100 jobs and close at least 15 facilities. 
The manufacturing company, headquartered in Carthage, produces components for use in bedding, furniture, airplanes, and vehicles. The company approved a restructuring plan, but has not yet said what specific facilities will close. And at the start of January, the Corporate Transparency Act went into effect, meaning small businesses must report financial records to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. The purpose? To help prevent money laundering. A Web City Tax Service and the Carthage Chamber of Commerce believe a lot of local businesses aren't aware of the change. Businesses have until January 1, 2025 to make sure records are filed. But if they miss the deadline, the consequences could be costly. There are civil penalties. It's $500 a day that you're in non-compliance. There are criminal penalties up to two years imprisonment and up to a $10,000 fine. And the federal government is offering webinars and other information to help business owners navigate the new rules. Local schools are seeing students for the first time since the winter weather hit the four states. While some districts use snow days, others also took advantage of AMI days. AMI stands for Alternative Method of Instruction, which means that students are studying from home. Carthage schools, for example, had one snow day and used two AMI days. Well, I, you know, I think the concept was born during the pandemic, um, but I also think that just now that the technology is there for a lot of schools and that uh, kids have the ability to learn from home, um, you know, virtually, I think that it's a, an opportunity now that, that the state has implemented. If it's too cold outside, I don't like staying out there for very long. So it's nice to have something to come inside and do when you're not outside doing stuff. But not every district in the area used AMI days. Carl Junction Schools, for example, chose not to use them. We tried reaching out to that district, but they were not available for an interview. And that's a look at today's top stories in weather in our first seven minutes. Up next on KOAM News at Noon. Several nonprofits were impacted by the winter storm, causing them to cancel food giveaways. So, with the increase in calls for help, Arkansas Food Bank steps up to try to meet the need. And later, we're making speckled brookie bars in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Stay tuned. Arkansas is the nation's leader regarding food insecurity, and on top of that, this week's winter forced many hourly workers to lose income with businesses closing. That's where the Arkansas Food Bank comes into play, where they've put in extra efforts to keep its stores open and Arkansans fed. During major winter events like the one we just had, running to the grocery store to stock up on food is a winter weather routine, but not everyone has that luxury. So it's up to our partners to try to figure out, you know, how do we um, make sure that they're receiving this food and what does that look like? Several nonprofits were impacted by the winter storm, causing them to cancel food giveaways. So with the increase in calls for help, Arkansas Food Bank stepped up to try to meet the need. We were able to get a lot of our pantries rescheduled for their deliveries and pickups and kind of get that into the hands of the community. According to Sherry Jones, the chief programs officer, food insecurity tends to increase during the inclement weather. We're going to have families that have lost income during this time frame that may not necessarily be able to go to the grocery store to purchase food now because they've lost, you know, two or three days of, you know, wages. And with the kids being out of school, anytime that that happens to ensure that they have you know, the snacks that they want and, you know, different foods that they need during this time frame. Even with the food bank trying to prepare for the weather, the increase in demand can be hard to match. We're going to need an increase in what we're, um, you know, pushing out into the community. So we're going to encourage everyone to really um, think about that and donate those food, monetary if they can. And the New Hampshire primary is Tuesday, and the leading Republican candidates are all campaigning in the Granite State. Each GOP hopeful is making multiple campaign stops today to deliver last-minute pitches to Republican and independent voters alike. Natalie Brand has more details from Washington. It's crunch time for candidates in the Granite State. I hear you're running again. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley got an early start Friday, mingling with voters at a coffee shop, hoping that New Hampshire solidifies her place as the alternative to former President Trump. DeSantis and Trump are way out for me. They were never in. They were actually never in. Mary Ellen Molyneux showed up to hear from Haley. New Hampshire allows independents to vote in the primary, and she's considering changing her registration to be able to participate. I'm close to feeling confident 
about her in terms of my vote. I'm a registered Democrat, but I feel like I will change my party to independent. Trump railed against New Hampshire's rules on Fox News's Hannity show, saying it artificially props up Haley. They're going to vote for her because they don't want to run against me. They want to run against her. George Washington University professor Todd Belt says allowing independents to vote in the primary better reflects who's more electable in November. It's not a perfect picture of America, but it's a closer picture than Iowa. What's at stake in New Hampshire? whether or not Nikki Haley can really pull away. I think that if we see Donald Trump come in below 50 percent, then that's going to indicate that there's a lot of Republicans who are looking for someone else. Meanwhile, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is in New Hampshire today. Hello, South Carolina. But he shifted resources to South Carolina, where he'll campaign this weekend. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. New Hampshire's Secretary of State says more than 4,000 Democrats switched their party affiliation to undeclared or Republican ahead of next week's primary. Still to come on KOAM News at Noon, we see what's cooking with Mr. Food. Can't decide whether you'd rather have a brownie or a chocolate chip cookie? Don't worry, we've got just the thing to solve that dilemma. But first, as we discussed earlier, a warm up is on the way. We'll talk about when that's going to get here and what kind of rain chances we're looking at when we come back. Welcome back to the KOAM News at noon. So clouds continuing to roll in on the Skywatch storm tracker, and that's why we're doing that partly cloudy bit out there. The good news is, is they're primarily high clouds, so nothing significant to worry about. Now we were touching on these uh, wind chill advisories that are in effect. Now again, the ones in Oklahoma and Arkansas don't officially kick in again until midnight, but all of these running until 10 a.m. 11 a.m. and noon on our Saturday. And that's for wind chills that once again could be upwards of 20 degrees below zero across the area. So definitely cold for sure. Now you take a look. Modoc camera 20 in the range. Look at all these people. They're going to lunch or they're heading back to work or maybe they're shopping or maybe they're just lost and they're driving anyway. It looks like a beautiful day. There's some sunshine out there, a few clouds overhead. Everyone's on the road and then you factor in the fact that it's really cold and on top of that, it's breezy. Take a look at the flags on top of City Hall, our camera on the Cornell complex. There's those high clouds, so not blocking out the sun by any means. It looks nice outside. It's just unfortunately it's still January and it's still quite cold. KDOT camera just south of Pittsburgh on 69. That sign says Says it all, wind chill advisory, and of course for help, dial star 47 for the highway patrol. Essential information, especially when we had snow covered highways out there, if you were off in a ditch, that's who you need to call. All right, in Joplin right now, despite how nice it looks, it is 13 degrees. It feels like one below zero with a northwest wind at 12, but we've been watching these cameras rock back and forth, so we know those gusts are pushing upwards of 30 at times. It is 12 in Pittsburgh, feels like two above. Not that that makes a difference, but it's at least on the plus side for now. Northwest breeze at seven temperatures around the area. Most of us sitting in the low teens out there and even some mid teens here and there. So 14 the Otisha, 13 in Chanute, 13 Lamar, Nevada, 12 in Fort Scott. And again, we have this odd temperature anomaly that shows up every so often on this map, uh, but we got 12 in the Osho 10 in Vanita. Then you factor in the wind temperature anomaly or not, and we are most of us, if not all of us, wind chills below zero out there, upwards of 10 degrees below zero. So the sunshine and the slightly warmer temperatures help. But as we head back into tonight and into the overnight hours, those wind chills will fall back down to about 20 below zero. Take a look at this Grove, Miami, Welch, Vanita, more than 30 degrees colder now than where we were yesterday. And yesterday we showed you this and it was bright oranges and summer light -like colors because we were about 20 degrees warmer than the day prior to that. So we have dropped significantly in the last 24 hours and that's why it's so darn cold. 19 today for our high. Those wind chills 10 to 20 below with the northwest breeze gusting upwards of 30. Believe it or not, we're going to go mostly clear tonight. Still cold. Winds gusting upwards of 20. Overnight low right around 6. And as we head into tomorrow, still chilly wind chills up to 15 below. Temperatures low 20, so a little better under partly cloudy skies. Heading down the road, 
We go into our Sunday still cold, so that's day three of the colder temperatures as we go mid 30s. Then we head into next week. Take a look at those temperatures getting into the 40s, upper 40s. We could even potentially be pushing the 50s as we head into next weekend. And we all we have to do for those warm temperatures is trade them off for some rain chances. But honestly, we still need the rain here around the area, so I'm not going to complain about getting much needed rain and much needed warmer temperatures. I'll out take there. the warmer temperatures. Absolutely. All right. Well, stick around because we're making speckled brookie bars in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We'll be right back. It's time to check in with Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today he's making speckled brookie bars. Take a look. I've got a question for you. Are you more of a brownie or a chocolate chip cookie kind of person? Over the last couple of weeks, I've asked the same question to a bunch of my friends and about half of them were pretty decisive that they liked one over the other. But there were others who couldn't choose. They liked both. If you're on the fence, then you're going to love today's recipe. It's a dessert that's part cookie and part brownie, and it goes together like this. The first thing we do is prepare a box of brownie mix according to the package directions. Then pour half the batter into a 9 by 13 pan. After spreading it evenly, we top it with slices of refrigerated chocolate chip cookie dough. Then we top that with the rest of the brownie batter before sprinkling on some chopped walnuts and chocolate chips. Now it's ready for the oven. After it bakes and cools, we cut it into bars and serve it with a tall glass of milk or next to a big scoop of vanilla ice cream. To get the recipe for our speckled brookie bars, which is half cookie, half brownie, and all decadent, all you have to do is visit our website. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a doubly delicious way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. To find this recipe along with many others, just head over to our website at koamnewsnow.com and click on Mr. Food. Now here's a look at the four state market prices. All right, so again, cold today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Wind chill advisories through Saturday. Of our wind chills, it could be upwards of 20 below zero out there. And then as we head into next week, take a look. It's going to warm up. We're going to trade that for rain chances, but we need the rain chances. But we're going to get warmer. Temperatures into the 40s, and we could even be pushing the 50s by next weekend. Should be great. I can't wait. Well, coming up tonight at 5, a new Justice Department report highlights serious failures by law enforcement in the 2022 mass shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. Plus, Missouri Southern State University is moving faculty around after a sprinkler burst in the administration building. And City of Carthage is asking residents to take a survey about its outdated aquatic center. All right, lots of stuff coming up tonight on the KWM News at 5. Yes, they are, Chris. They, they are. Well, Somebody thank you is. for joining us for KOAM News at Noon. It's right. Stay, stay warm out there. Stay warm out there, get through the weekend, and we'll see you right back here on Monday morning.